Hey everybody, and welcome to another stats tutorial series. In this series, we are going to update the PSPP, the PSPP bundle, woo! Um, now, uh, this is the download page uh, for PSPP for Mac, but you can also find downloads for all the uh, big operating systems out there. We've got GNU Linux, okay? So you can either download it for Debian or for Red Hat, but you can also get it on FlatHub as a flat pack install. You can get it on Windows and you can get it on Mac OS. Now, I was in the Mac OS. Um, when you click on application bundle, you can do this any way that you want, but I was uh, doing it and you can see that it is tested on Catalina. Of course, there have been three new operating systems since Catalina, sort of uh, the Big Sur 11, which completely changed the, the, the way that uh, Apple wrote the uh, operating system. And then, of course, 12 and 13 Monterey and Ventura that uh, built, off, uh, built off of uh, Big Sur's new uh, build. It is working, though. I will say that it is working. So this is great news. Now, when you open up the program for the first time, the app for the first time, it uh, looks like they added some some hints and some tips. And you have an option for loading uh, them at startup, which is nice. So I'm going to end up unchecking them. But uh, you can uh, export your results to ODT format for easy editing from LibreOffice, okay, which is great. Uh, what else do we got? Edit options to have your output window automatically appear when statistics are generated. We're definitely going to do that. Next tip. To reorder your variables, drag and drop them in variable view or in the data view. That's a great tip. Right click on variable lists to change between viewing variable names and their labels down uh, uh, in the variable view, Okay, which is very similar to how SPSS does it. And then click paste instead of OK when running procedures. This allows you to edit your commands before running them and you have better control of your work in the syntax mode that uh, SPSB and then PSPP has built off of. Uh, and then we'll do one more here. Directly import your spreadsheets using file import data menu. Awesome set of tips. And you could just, I think, keep clicking this over and over again to get more tips. I'm sure there's a massive amount of tips for you. OK, in this video, what I want to do is just talk about what the PSPP interface looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and uncheck this because I don't really want to see it again uh, when I open it. And so I'm going to hit close here. So just to walk you around some of the changes that uh, the program went through going from 1.4 to 1.6, which is great. OK, um, it's sort of got an updated view here. So we've got uh, uh, images for various uh, various functions. So open, save, uh, jump to a variable, create a new variable. Uh, come on, tooltip. Split the active data set. This is one piece that PSPP has over Jamovi and Jasp is the is the ability to split outside of and independent of any analyses, which is great. Waiting cases if you want to by variable and then show or hide value labels. And so we have two views. By default, you get taken into the variable view, which gives you each variable by row. And it tells you what kind of variable it is. And you, these are uh, various things that you can change. You can change the type it is. You can change the width, the decimal uh, amount, uh, what its label is, any value labels for categorical variables or ordinal variables, how to handle missing values, how many columns, uh, where to align it, center, right, left, that kind of thing, uh, measure, what kind of measure it is, and what kind of role that it plays. And then in data view, you have your variables as columns and your case as rows. So uh, in variable view, you switch from column to row and then data view, it puts the variables in the columns. And that's how spreadsheets are generally set up in most spreadsheet editors that use a graphical user interface for this. Now in data view, you have your open and your save. You have your uh, jump to a variable. You have your jump to a case. So if you want case 25, well, it'll jump to that. You can search for values in the data, which is not a common way to look for data, but it's amazing, right? You can click on this and it'll give you your list of variables in this column here or in this box, I would say. You plop one of those in there and then you can search for a value. Wrap around, search backwards. It'll be able to do all of that and we can close that. Uh, so let's jump to case. Create new variable at current position. So if you've got one of your variables selected, these are all sort of grayed out here, so I can't really do much here until I open up some data. And then we've got split, we've got weight, and we've got show value labels. So we've a couple of options added in data view versus variable view. Some of those jump to and search aren't available, which, you know, a search, I'm just going to add a suggestion here, a search for a variable. Maybe you have a massive amount of variables in variable view, right? You've got, uh, you know, several hundred. So 26 is if you don't have anything open, 26 is the basic place where you can scroll to. This is very cool. I like this. Scroll bars uh, on Mac are, are very unstated, but there so you can see them. Uh, but then hovering over them, they get bigger. So you can then just drag them back and forth. OK, I think that's pretty cool. All right. So we've got that. And then up here, we've got our menu bar, which is very different from how a regular Mac app works. A regular map app puts the menu bar up here. 
But in this case, since this menu is fully contained within the app and there is no additional ways that you can, that at least Mac can use the program, it's going to be contained within here, right? So we've got Windows and Help here as opposed to Windows and Help up here. And it's going to keep showing me the stats when I hover over there. So we've got File. When you click on that, you've got your normal file stuff, New, Open, or the Import function, which we'll explore in another video. Save and Save As. You can rename a data set. You can display the data file information. So working file or external file recently used. Um, it remembers all the way back from when I did my original series of PSPP. We've got that recently used files, and then we can do quit, which will quit the app completely. I believe clicking the X on Max will also close, quit the program as opposed to just closing the window, leaving it running. Uh, edit will give us our copy, cut, paste, clear, some uh, edit our in-app options, right? So it, one of the things it said was to show the output as soon as there is uh, output available. So we'll go into that in another video view. So how do you want to view it? So do you want to view the status bar, which is down here, which will tell you what is happening with your analyses. Okay. Font, you can change the font. You can have your grid lines in the app itself, data and variable view. And of course, this is a radio button. So you can only look at one view at a time, uh, data, not transform. Okay. There we go. We can sort cases and these dot, dot, dots here that you can see will bring up different dialog boxes we can transpose we can aggregate which is nice or aggregate depending on how you want to say that we can split the file again this is an, an amazing ability that spss has when you're dealing with a lot of cases but you want to only use one i don't know gender maybe let's say you want to just have only men and you only want to run analyses with men versus uh, any other gender so that split file is amazing. You could also select cases. So you can um, use a random amount of, let's say you have a thousand cases, but you only want to run analyses on 500. So you can randomly select 500 cases. That's awesome. Here's that weight cases, the scale button there. So you can then weight cases, again, using a variable to weight cases versus other variables. Transform, we can compute, we can count, we can rank, we can automatically recode. We can recode into the same variable. Although I will say I dislike um, changing raw variables themselves. So I'll usually just recode into different variables. This is like if you needed to do a reverse code on a few items of a scale because they were worded in the opposite way. And then you can run any pending transformation. So in the compute, count, rank, and automatic recode, you can queue them, okay? And they can be pending and you just hit this button and it will run all of them, which is really cool. Um, descriptive statistics uh, under analyze. So we've got our, all of our analyze. So as opposed to Previous videos on my channel with Jasp, Jamovi, and other uh, other things. You, this is just you run it from a single an, uh, an analyze menu. I would keep wanting to say analysis, analyze, and so you can see here all of the ones that we can do in PSPP out of the gate. Okay, there's no additional add-ons like Jasp and Jamovi, but we can use descriptive statistics, which in includes cross tabs here for your chi square. Um, additional things uh, in explore, but frequencies and descriptives. So frequencies are for categorical. So I know in Jasper and Jamovi, these two things are combined and you can run all of your categorical and continuous variables in the same module. These are different modules here. We can compare means, which includes all of your t-tests and a one-way ANOVA. You can do univariate analysis, which is where you do most of your complex ANOVAs, uh, including uh, both uh, between subjects and within subjects or repeated measures ANOVAs. Bivariate correlation for just doing correlation matrices, K means clusters, where you can look at K means factor analysis, which is great for both exploratory and confirmatory factor analysis, doing reliability analysis, uh, inner uh, rate of reliability, uh, uh, internal consistency reliability. These are uh, the built-in functions. We can do linear regression if you have more than one predictor and one DV that you are trying to predict, continuous variables, but you can also use dummy coded categorical variables. And then binary logistic. This is the basic functionality. This is the basic logistic regression in PSPP. Um, there's no fancy logistic regression here. Non-parametric statistics, so additional chi-square, binomial, doing a runs analysis, one sample K, S, two related samples, K related samples, and K independent samples, where K is um, just however many samples you have. And then the interesting thing that I always found about SPSS is there was always an ROC curve analysis. And of course, the makers of PSPP see that and they're like, yeah, well, it's we're, we're making a free version, so to speak, of SPSS. So we got to include the ROC curve there, which I think is amazing. You can also do graphing, uh, scatter plots, histograms, and bar charts. Some of these are um, modified in the new 1.6 update. So bar charts and all of that in our our added functionality, which is great. You can do utilities. I think variables, you can modify some of these the information here or add comments to the data file itself. And then of course we have windows. Um, you can add in the split window. If you split your variables, you can um, have two windows for that. Uh, when we have when we have videos with output, we are gonna have another 
window for output. So rather than, again, in Jasmine Jamovi, where the output's off to the right in those files, so keeping the whole thing self-contained, the only additional windows you have in this are for different data sets. Here, you would have different windows for different data sets. And of course, here, we don't have a data set open, and so this would be data set one, but you could go to file and rename the data set. So if you have multiple data sets open, they can be different. Uh, they could be called different things. And then, of course, the help file, F1. I don't know. Uh, I think I'd have to have, hold the function button open and hit F1, um, but I don't think it did anything because I'm holding function down on my keyboard and doing that, and I don't think it opened. Nope. System information and then the about, which, again, the about, you can see that uh, this, unlike uh, Jasmine Jamovi again, and there's going to be a lot of comparison to Jasmine Jamovi because I use Jamovi in my teaching, and I used to use Jasmine in my teaching. So there's going to be a lot of comparisons in this video series to that. And so um, here, unlike uh, Jasmine Jamovi, it doesn't tell you which version you're working with, but you have to click about to get what version of PSPP. And just to confirm with you, I am using the most recent version of 1.6.2. So that is the user interface for PSPP 1.6.2. Looks fresh and updated. I can't wait to explore more in the next videos. I want to do, I want to mention one more thing before we leave this video here is, so I'm bringing back this and uh, the, the, the uh, PSPP download site. Okay. Um, and I want to showcase the user manual and um, there are plenty of ways to access it. So I would say the most appropriate one that most users will use is either the uh, HTML one page right here, which is on top. So it's about uh, 1.4 kilobytes. Okay. Oh, wait, that's uh, that's K. Excuse me. Um, so it is four, uh, 1.4 megabytes, I think is what that's something like that. Or the 1.4 megabytes PDF file. Okay. Um, which is down here. I think I think those are the most appropriate ones, but you can get rid of all of the the screenshots and stuff. If you just want to do the, uh, the, the ASCII text here, you can download that. You can see it's half the size. Okay. Or you can download a, an HTML um, compressed. I think every person who's probably watching this YouTube video can handle the HTML all on one page. Um, up here, we have the uh, contact uh, contents, excuse me, and the index. You can see they developed this app in 1997, which I think is amazing. Right. Um, and you can just scroll. These are the, this is the table of contents and you can just, it's endless scrolling. Now, I think one possible reason why you wouldn't want to do this is because look how big this is. That'd be one possible reason. So let me show you the PDF file. It's going to open it in my uh, viewer here. I've got a, Adobe. Okay. Uh, we're going to close that. Uh, and then here we go. And this is a linked. Oh, wait, no, it's not. I thought it was going to be linked. Well, mm, that's no good. Well, at least they did update it for 1.6.2. That's nice. <laughs> so we've got that. Uh, but so you can scroll through that. But the other HTML page is one page per node, essentially. So how do you delete variables? Well, then it, you click on that link and it'll take you to that. And then you can click back and do that and then go to temporary and do all that and do Kendall, the Chris Kyle Wallace test, right? And this gives you not only what the test is and how you actually do it, but um, it gives you the code for or the syntax language for doing that. And you can either go next or go back to contents or hit back, which I think is a really cool idea. So that's how you use broadly PSPP. Stay tuned for the next videos where we go through each of these big ideas. I'm not going to go through the entire uh, the entire contents that that would just be absolutely way too long of a series, even though I've been you know doing Jamovi and Jazz for a couple of years now. I like to keep my PSPP series tight. OK, so stay tuned for the next ones. I will see you then. Please leave your comments, suggestions and feedback down below, including questions on how to do things. I love answering that stuff. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.